working on an unfinished Victoria Steamboat Part 5, cleaning the brass base plate, refitting the burner to the boiler and checking for water leaks. Connecting the gas and lighting it, then showing something that you must not do under any circumstances. Before that though, I need to clean the brass base plate which is heavily tarnished. I started by using Scotch-Brite, but this didn't make much of an impression. With a bit of lateral thinking, I put the base plate in the dishwasher, and now it looks like this. Before any dishwasher experts tell me that I shouldn't use a dishwasher for this job, I would just like to say that I didn't also have crockery in the dishwasher at the time. Here I'm removing the chimney and the safety valve pipe, and having a really good look at the boiler, and, to be honest, for its age it looks very good. There are some marks on the varnish and definitely some marks on the black paint around the bottom which tells me that it's been overheated. But the overheating at some time in the past wasn't serious because the mahogany cladding is okay. I briefly turned my attention to the base plate to see if I could get it any cleaner so I used a combination of Scotch-Brite and Brasso wadding and I think it looks almost like new. Brasso in many forms has been around for years and it's still just as good as it used to be when they first made it. I'm getting ready to clean the inside of the boiler because I think there's a lot of lime scale in there. First of all, I refit the plug on the side using some Loctite 542. And in this clip, I'm screwing the burner base back into the boiler. In this clip, you can clearly see where the boiler's been repainted at some time in the past. The copper base for the burner is held to the main boiler using small steel cross-headed screws which are a bit out of place I think. For instance the main base plate fastens to the boiler using some slot-headed screws which are the same as the ones used to hold the engine to the base plate. These are brass countersunk machine screws so I'm taking great pains not to shear them off by applying too much pressure with the screwdriver. There is another small cross-head screw which holds the igniter onto the base plate. Even though this ignition system is not good, I showed that it does work and I've refitted it to the plant. It's just not very good at igniting the gas. An open flame above the chimney is a much better way to do it. Filling the boiler with water and checking for leaks. The only funnel I have in this workshop is a small mammod funnel, which is a bit too small. As I am checking for leaks, I don't want to spill any water anywhere near the boiler. I just do the job slowly. It seemed to take an age to fill the boiler. That's why I set these clips to run at 400% just to make the job look a bit quicker. For this initial test, I will not be pressurising the boiler. A serious health and safety notice. I am about to show a procedure which is very dangerous and I do not recommend doing what you are about to see. Doing this could be very bad for your health. This is a bottle of Kilrock K Kettle Descaler. It's what I use to descale my domestic kettle, and it's also what I use in my acid bath for cleaning parts. This stuff is largely diluted formic acid, and here I'm putting a small amount of it into the boiler after the water. This part is okay, it will actually descale the boiler without any heat, but when it's used to descale a kettle, you have to heat it. It's okay to use it cold, but under no circumstances must you do what you're about to see. With the water and a little Kilrock K inside the boiler, I light the burner. The first thing I notice is a gas leak around the jet holder. This is called a banjo union. And oddly enough, these days gas jet holders are silver soldered to the copper gas pipe. I think I'll use the original gas jet holder, but I've applied some Loctite 542 to the threads and I'm really tightening the banjo union so it won't leak. And in this clip, after relighting the burner, it's not leaking anymore. What I need to do now is set the position of the gas jet to optimum. This is quite simple to do, and you just require your nose. And once the foul smell stops emanating from the chimney when the gas is lit, you know that your gas jet is in the right place. It needs to smell clean and fresh, not really horrible. I will not insert a girlfriend joke at this point. I found this to be the optimum position for the gas jet in the Venturi. So once I'd found the position, I marked it with a felt tip pen and tightened it in place using the screw. While I'm waiting for the steam to appear, I'd just like to mention that a kind viewer told me that this was a Creek Victoria steam launch. There is evidence of some steam coming out of the hole at the top of the boiler, followed by this lot. 
This is called priming and it's not even under pressure. And it's extremely dangerous because this is a mixture of boiling water and formic acid. I like to do things like this because then you do not have to do the same. Seriously, this is very dangerous indeed. Formic acid is corrosive, particularly when it's hot. I'll make it happen again. This time there was less water in the boiler, so the water spouts are a bit less. This phenomenon is called priming, and it does actually happen in boilers that have impurities in the water, such as silver solder flux residue, etc. I immediately unscrewed the boiler from the brass base and immediately wiped away the residue from the brass base because it was causing patination. After removing all traces of the acid in the kitchen sink by filling it with water from the tap and flushing several times, I refilled the boiler with clean water and remounted it, then I relit the burner. Notice once again that the gas jet holder doesn't go too far into the Venturi. Thanks to the felt tip pen mark, I know where to put it. Now that the boiler is thoroughly clean, thanks to the Kilrock K, and filled with clean water, this time when it starts to boil, there is no longer any sign of a priming water spout. Just a bit of low pressure steam. The main feed to the engine is not connected to the engine, so the steam is just coming out of there. And there is no pressure whatsoever showing on the pressure gauge. I thought it was a good idea to connect a piece of silicone rubber piping to the outlet and see what happened. I was going to squeeze the end to create some pressure but it got very hot very quickly. And when I pointed the steam jet at the camera, the camera flatly refused to focus on it. Still no priming though and the boiler test is a success. In the next episode I will attach the engine and give the entire plant a thorough steam test. That's it for now, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and don't do what you've just seen me do in this episode. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back